Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to talk about Apple's new release of their VR headset, as well as where Meta stands currently in the market. And so with Apple releasing their new headset, the terms VR, AR, and Metaverse, and spatial computing have been all over the internet and investors' minds as they try to find the best way to capitalize on these new technology. So in this, I want to discuss what I see happening between the two major players um, in this space, Meta and Apple. Now, with any new technology, you have to establish the need or the want within the customer before you can bring the price down and make it accessible for everyone. Uh, in this case, both approaches are being tried by Meta and Apple. Meta is trying to make it accessible to everyone by pricing their products anywhere from $299 to $999. This is while Apple has priced their headset $3,500. And I think Apple's approach is the right choice to make because before it can be a mass market product that everyone wants and many have, it has to be something that everyone wants or needs. As Paul Merlucky, the creator and founder of Oculus said, sometimes free isn't enough. This idea refers to emerging technologies where a technology needs to cross a threshold of features and offerings to its users and make it worth using it at all. Without that, it doesn't matter how low the cost of the product is if no one really wants to use it. Now, I think it's important to go over their most recent hardware releases. So first off, we have the MetaQuest 3, and this will cost $4.99 while the MetaQuest Pro is priced at $999. This makes them similarly priced to the PSVR 2, but significantly cheaper than the Apple Vision Pro, which costs $3,500. While this is not a tech review, it is evident from watching their keynotes on the VR product releases that Apple Vision Pro offers superior returns and a seemingly better experience compared to any other headset that Meta has released. However, since all these products are still in their early stages, it is difficult to determine the true capabilities of each company. And considering the $3,500 price tag, it is expected that Apple's headset must surpass Meta's next-gen headsets, which range from $499 to $999 in price. As we witness significant improvements in the Meta headset, such as double the GPU power and 40% slimmer design compared to the MetaQuest 2, many investors are pondering which company will dominate this market and profit the most from the metaverse or spatial computing. Now, the question still remains, who will claim the lion's share of the market? While it is possible for there to be more than one winner in this market, just as similar to iPhones and Androids, I believe that Apple is more likely to dominate despite the higher price point. And I have a few main reasons for that thinking. Now, my first reason is Apple has a long history of making great grand slam hits when it comes to new product categories like the watch and the AirPods, while Meta doesn't have any. Now to further expand on that, Apple has a rich history of making products that quickly dominate their respective industries, like the AirPods and the Apple Watch. Although they may not initially be well received, such as when people made fun of the weird white wireless stem sticking out of your ears, or everyone saying that you don't need a mini iPhone on your wrist, they are both now leading their respective markets in market share. Now this doesn't mean that the headset will do the same, but if they release a premium product that is truly revolutionary in the space, I will believe they will be able to iterate and generate massive value over the long term for shareholders. My second reason is Apple's ecosystem, the walled garden and vast user base. That young Americans are the vast majority of iPhone users. And the reason I think this is an advantage for them is that whenever Apple releases a new product, they always make sure that the rest of their products work extremely well with each other. Now, if they are able to utilize AirPods spatial audio, Apple Music, Apple TV, Fitness Plus, Apple Arcade, FaceTime, iMessage, and the rest of their proprietary apps, I believe they will be able to win over the majority of Apple users who are deciding between an Apple headset and a MetaQuest headset. Now, my third reason is the overall sentiment towards these two companies. Now, although I personally do not care about some of the privacy issues that many worry about with Meta, it is undoubtedly an issue when strapping a headset with cameras on you, in your face, in your home. And Apple has taken care of its image when it comes to privacy, while Meta seems to have an unshakable cloud of mistrust hanging over them, even after they changed their name from Facebook to Meta. And this could lead to many potential users to push them over the edge alongside the other reasons stated, and could really hurt Meta's business in the long term. And the fourth reason, which I believe is one of the most important, is Apple's ability to market. And although I am more of a numbers guy when it comes to the finances and investing, I would be hard pressed to deny the fact that Apple has an uncanny ability to convince people not only that a product is useful, but also that it is cool and that you need it. For example, when AirPods first came out, people made fun of the long stems and the white design and said they look stupid, but 
Now they are a pseudo status symbol and are some of the best wireless headphones businesses in the entire world. They also did something similar with their Apple Watch as not many people had smartwatches before the Apple Watch and now it is the most popular watch in the world. And as corny as it may sound, Apple has an intangible skill in how they market products that Meta simply just does not possess. And I believe this could be a significant factor in the future of their businesses and play a big role in the future of AR and VR. Now, having said all that about Apple's advantages in creating successful hardware products, it's important to recognize that Meta does have a head start and they have already partnered with companies like Microsoft and others to build out useful experiences for their users. Now, although Meta does have that head start, I think it's important to note that Apple has a significant advantage with its success in the iPhone app store and clearly has a strong developer base for their products because developers know that if they get their apps and their services on Apple products, they will have the reach and distribution to many customers that use these Apple products. Now, while neither of these arguments is particularly compelling, given that none of these businesses are driving any real value creation in terms of profit, I think Apple will have no problem surpassing Meta's ecosystem and developer base before 2025 due to the early ways that both companies are approaching these platforms. And if we're discussing the financial position of both these tech giants, I believe they are both capable of sustaining substantial loss in these segments as they build out their new platforms. But I will say, however, that Meta seems to be in a tougher position due to the negative investor reactions to their initial pivot into the metaverse and the subsequent backtrack after the macroeconomic conditions deteriorated and people were pricing in a recession coming up. Now, the market did not respond favorably to the idea of Meta funneling their free cash flow into the idea of reality labs and VR and AR and saw it as a huge loss for quite a while. And that was part of the reason that the stock dropped from over $300 down to 80 and has now jumped all the way back up to 280. Now, although we are still so early in this new market and this new technology, and we have such little history of products released in this category, I do tend to believe that Apple will be able to capture the majority of the market's profits given the nature of most of these products being on their premium side when compared to Meta and their more budget-friendly versions. I think that Apple is taking a smarter approach in trying to make a profit on each individual unit instead of selling them at a huge loss just to gain users and make the money up back on the platform. And when choosing investments between these two drastically different companies, I think it's important to consider the management team's success in releasing highly successful hardware products. And when you do that, you will find that Meta has far more execution risk compared to Apple. And personally, after the run-up from the 80s to over 280, I have sold out of my Meta position. Although it could most certainly be an excellent position for many people um, going forward, I just personally don't believe that they will be able to execute on this VR AR plan that they have. And while Meta could certainly be a great position and offer great returns to their investors in the future, I just do not believe in their ability to generate meaningful profits from their metaverse ventures anytime soon. And so make sure to do your own due diligence and really research these companies for yourself and see what you think is possible and what will happen. Both companies are doing great things and trying to innovate rapidly in this VR AR space. So really go do your own research and watch their keynotes, watch their presentations and what technologies they're working on and what user base they're trying to attract. And don't just follow what I say, because this is just my personal opinion and what I'm doing with mine. Now, thanks for watching. That's all I got for today. I'll see you in the next one.